Bruce alone. When the time comes, he must be trained. Like you trained his father? These creatures were here before us. And if we're not careful, they're gonna be here after. Soups lose hundreds of people each year. It's a collateral damage. It's fucking diabolical. They're all like that? All of them. Yeah, pardon my French, fuck those fuckers. This Organized Chaos podcast is brought to you by Gems Art Studio. This podcast is also brought to you by listeners like you. Thank you. And hello and welcome to... Hello. Yes, yes. Bobby is here too. Bobby. Bobby, I was doing the introduction. You fucked me up. How dare you? Oh, oh, for shame. Oh, shit. Now now we have to restart the whole thing. Shutting, shutting down the yeah. stream, guys. Yeah, yeah, shutting... yeah. From the top. <laughs> yes, we are live streaming this, and I should probably post this on my main channel. But it was fun last time live streaming from the main channel. But now now if you, if you want to enjoy that, you should come to the podcast channel. Maybe, maybe I should say that on the main channel. I can't keep up. <laughs> But yes, uh, joining me is Bobby. How you doing, Bobby? Mm. I'm doing good. How are you? I am. I'm here. You know, working. All right. Yeah. Uh, finding yeah. out. Finding out that apparently Obi Wan Kenobi is the worst thing ever produced by anything ever, <laughs> which is an uh, interesting take. <laughs> I mean, I guess we haven't discussed Obi Wan Kenobi at all, but we will be getting to that in the podcast, no. the first three episodes. Um, also, going to be talking about Jurassic World Two, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which. I mean, it's a movie. It's it's a thing. Yeah. It's, it's definitely yeah. something to discuss. Um, it's part of the canon now. Yes, yes. And because of that movie, uh, we'll get to it, because that uh, Lost World and Jurassic Park 3 are very much part of the canon as well, which opens up all types of holes, which is the offhand line in this movie, but we'll get to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, let's see our thing. We are discussing something else. Yes, The Boys. Uh, the season yes. three of the boys premiered just a couple days ago. So of course we're talk we're going back in time and talk about the first four episodes of the entire series ever. Mainly because I thought it would be fun to talk about this series because it's a good series. I the first four episodes are awesome, <laughs> but yes, we have quite a few uh, boys episodes to go over. Um, we have a lot of catching up to do. Yes, yes. Well, I want to talk about it on the podcast too. It's a fun show. And... Oh, it it really is. But uh, yes, uh, so are we ready to get into Obi Wan? Yeah. All right. The first three episodes of Obi Wan Kenobi, I didn't even realize. Uh, I think I went to watch the first two on Wednesday, and I saw the third one was on there. I was like, "What?" I I thought these were coming out on Friday, but nope, they're coming out on Wednesdays. This premiered the first two yeah. on Friday. <laughs> yeah, they uh, dropped the first two like back to back. Yeah. Uh, That's when I watched the first two, yeah. and then I watched the uh, third one uh, just yesterday. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, my overall thoughts on this show is I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, yeah, I absolutely. There's a huge. Like, I'm not gonna lie. There's a huge hate train on this show right now, and it's interesting because overall, I'm thinking it's pretty fucking good. Pretty. <laughs> yeah, I kind of discovered the hate train thing too, and I don't know why. Yeah, I don't get it. Like either. what? practical reason there is for all the hate um yeah I, I guess we should just address the elephant in the room about it um i guess there there's a big f majority of fans who have sent a lot of racist messages to the uh one of the stars of the film yeah well i, I, I want to the series it's not a majority this is why i like to call a vocal minority a majority yes a vocal minority yeah. yes thank you for yeah. uh and apparently lots of people are coming out and defending these uh people sending racist messages essentially um yeah these, these people i'm sorry these people can fuck off um yeah like um you, you, don't, you don't defend racism no I mean. no it, but lots of people are right now it, it's kind of pissed me off um yeah yeah it, it it is it, it it's always kind of disappointing when a fandom of that you would consider yourself a part mm -hmm. of 
you realize that, you know, like, wow, a lot of these people are fucking toxic people. Yes. And that's just sickening. Like, like I've always said, I enjoy Star Wars, even every new addition to it, because it's new Star Wars. Exactly. I hate the culture and fandom behind it. Though. Yeah, no, it's getting. But I love Star Wars. It's getting I the really infuriating, uh, the fandom behind this uh and I, I always kind of hated it for those who didn't call you a real fan because you didn't read the novels. Yes. It, like, I, I remember those days. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I do want to specify, I actually have read a couple of the novels when I was a, a teenager. So it, it was it was a couple uh, years yeah. ago, at least. I read a few of the comics and I read like uh, like one of the novels that they had made for like young adults. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, there was one that was, like, about uh, Han and Leia's kid. I think they called him Anakin Solo. And they had twins. And they were at a Jedi Academy. Yeah. Luke's Jedi Academy. The Mysteries of the Yeah, Jedi there was Academy. something like that. I want to say they had twins. Was yeah. it Ben and Anakin? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure Ben was one of them. Or I, maybe I'm conflating it with Kylo I Ren. Was, I don't know. I, I want to say one was a girl. Yeah, that does seem familiar. I just can't remember what they named uh, her. Yeah, I can't remember either. That being said, I want to specify, I do remember enjoying the books. One thing I really remember about the books, though, was that they would have really good ideas. I feel like a lot of them would really half-ass the endings, and that would drive me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> like, here's some really good ideas and set up, and then the ending, it felt like, oh, crap, we need to end this. Uh, fucking spy broken and killed him. Fuck it. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> They got sucked out through a yeah. vacuum in space. Oh, fucking flew into an asteroid. He's dead, so we're never going to speak of him again. Uh, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> a sarlacc yeah. of him. Um, you know, and I don't want to bash on the books, because I enjoy the books, uh, what I read. But like I said, it was it was half-ass endings last time, and I, part of me did appreciate Disney for trying to do something different. It has always been a hit with Disney. I do feel like Obi-Wan's might be a hit, though. Maybe, maybe not with all the fans, but I think overall this is good quality series i like how they're absolutely they're explaining that middle chapter for obi-wan which i want to specify there should be a middle chapter for obi-wan because where they left off is a character who's essentially been beaten everything he's been raised in his life up to that point has been destroyed so now all he has is kind of like protecting luke and they're picking up from that point and i don't think it's an illogical point to pick up where he's kind of broken at this point and they are giving him a hero's journey. Uh, like, you see him doing that menial labor, just kind of passing the days by. And he's obviously bored and shit like that. He gets the first call yeah. to action from that Jedi who says no to him, which is exactly the hero's journey. The first call to action, they say no to that. And then All right. and then he realizes, you know, he gets the second call to action and it's really forced upon him. And this is the closest thing I think they come to a genuine bait and switch. And it's not that Reva's the main character of this series, because she's not. She's actually the main villain so far. Um, yeah. The, the bait and switch is that this isn't about Obi-Wan connect, uh, protecting Luke and developing a relationship with Luke. It's about Obi-Wan con- protecting Leia and f- developing a relationship with her, which I thought was an interesting bait and switch. Um, which is one yeah. I actually appreciate. Because... Uh, I actually think the child actress that plays Leia does a fairly good job for a child actress. I have, to, I do have to hedge it because it is a child yeah. actress. I, I totally buy that that kid grows up to be Carrie oh, Fisher. Oh yeah, well that's the way Leia acts like, like, in I the totally franchise. Buy it. Yeah. So having like a younger yeah. version of that character well, makes sense. They would act that way. I mean, now the, there is something about it that I kind of thought threw me off a little bit with it. And New Hope how Leia said, you know, years ago you served my father, you know, in the Clone Wars. You you don't think, do you think that she doesn't, that she never put it together that, you know, Ben Kenobi was General Kenobi? Yeah, I think... Obi-Wan Kenobi. Well, I think you're always going to have issues when you do that. Because, like, you, you want to talk about how the prequels are seamless because they're not. Because uh, when Obi-Wan first sees R2 in the New Hope, he's like, I don't recall ever owning a droid. Dude, you hung out with this droid oh, like all the te- time. <laughs> yeah, he hung out with it. He never did. Own yeah, it, but though. he would recognize R two. <laughs> yeah, he would recognize R two. <laughs> so I think he might have where he like well, where he took off the helmet first. He's like, well, hello, little one. Yeah, yeah. That seems like a greeting that you know, like I know you. 
But yeah. What are you doing out here? There's always going to be little <laughs> road bumps like that whenever you introduce new stuff to the game. Yeah. Um, is it going to be a big road bump? I don't think it's a big one. Um, well, I mean, this one, you know, we could hold George responsible for. Well, sure, sure. Because <laughs> he did write A New Hope, and he technically did write a... What? Um, episode uh, 3, uh, Revenge of the Sith. Episode 3 and 1 and yeah. 2. Well, to actually be, despite the Adam, the Anakin and Padme chemistry, oh that one was probably the best out of the three. Well, I want, I would definitely go with Revenge of the Sith as the best out of the three, but oh yeah, yeah, um, that turn was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, the, the prequels have issues though. I'll admit, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll admit though, watching the the series like those first few episodes of Obi Wan, I was about ready just to like watch Attack of the Clones. I know. It kind of did make me want to go through and watch like, some yeah, of the prequels. I, I <laughs> kind of want to rewatch those again. Yeah. Like, I haven't had this desire to rewatch the first one again since I watched that theory about Jar Jar Binks being the Sith Lord. <laughs> and I kind of wanted to be like, no way. There are not that many clues in it. And after watching it, there are that many mm-hmm. clues. It's plausible. Yeah. It's plausible. That's all I'm going to say Well, about it did it. make me wish maybe I had scheduled time in the podcast to get, like, those prequels in. But I always feel like, God, this podcast fills up quickly. And it's like, I do want to get fun stuff in there, too. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, but, it, I mean, God, maybe we should just resort it to, like, a month. Yeah. Like, next year, we just dedicate the month of May to Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> We can find some interesting stuff in, in the Star Wars yes. canon to talk about. Well, we have not <laughs> talked about the holiday special yet. So. No. I keep threatening yeah. it, but you just keep deleting no. that idea. No, 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 I've seen it too much. Oh, come on. It haunts my dreams. Don't you want dreams. the Harvey <laughs> Corman? The, ha- the Harvey Corman Cinelon? Yes. With uh, B. Arthur? Yes. <laughs> and Grandpa watching his uh, Wookiee sex division. Oh, God, that's... That was a thing, wasn't it? That one. <laughs> oh, Grandpa masturbating. I needed that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's nothing says the holidays like that. But the good news is that uh, <laughs> thankfully, Obi Wan Kenobi is much worse than the holiday special. Right? <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, ah. I mean, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, I've, I've found I, people I, saying it. <laughs> I have. Yeah, I just, I don't know. No, it's, it's... I have a theory that people just don't like the set, like, just probably don't like Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan. I'm getting the sense, and I don't know why I'm getting the sense, because it's obvious. These people are just pre-set up to hate all this stuff now. It yeah. It just doesn't matter. Disney does well, the lightest bit to the left, and Disney is not a left corporation. Disney's conservative as fuck. But they do the slightest step to the yeah. left, and all of a sudden they're against everything. It's like you people are obnoxious. Yeah, against, <laughs> and they're they're indoctrinating children into yes. uh, alternative lifestyles and things of the sort. Yes, it is <laughs> obnoxious. <laughs> but 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 you know, all children recreate, you know, the crucifixion and resurrection. Oh yeah, that's fine. And right? have that be perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, that's as much on my soapbox on that as I'm gonna. Same. Well, yeah, let's let's do more child <laughs> recreations of the fucking passion. That'll be great. <laughs> yeah, let, let, let make sure you get him right in the gut, yeah. but Billy, right in the liver. Yeah, it gets oh. it gets cringe. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 fuck sakes. <laughs> well, it looks like our stream is being and interrupted, I mean, but I am also recording this, so this might also be an upload. So I don't know probably. what's going on. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> Uh, my Skype window is frozen. My little window that shows like what you're seeing is still like fine and not lagging, but the big window is like frozen. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we will be experimenting <coughs> with this live stream. The last one went fairly fluidly, so I don't know why this one's clunky. We have had power hiccups here, so maybe it's something to do with uh, that. That that might be. Yeah. It. Who knows? But anyways, we still have. And I and and my. It looks like in my area, just some bad weather started rolling through too. So, but yeah, you know, I yeah, it's weird. Our our connection is fine, but like apparently our connection with YouTube isn't. I love it, I love it. I would like to get this live streaming at some point though, <laughs> reliably. Oh yeah, 
But yes. Oh yeah, I'm just checking the YouTube right now, and it looks like it's oh, it's buffering. Yeah, which sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, this is a this is a good show. Uh, Obi Wan has to go protect Leia, which I thought was interesting. Uh, there was an offhand mm-hmm. line that I thought was weird. Uh, she comments, like Obi-Wan says, we're going to go undercover, you're my daughter. And she's like, granddaughter, perhaps. And it's like, okay, yeah, he's a little old to be your father. But he's younger than your adopted dad. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. No, there was, what's funny is, there was a moment, I want to say it was in the second episode, where she started acting a lot like Padme. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, she did it, and I was, like, just smiling, and I was like, wow, that that's totally not like her mother. Yeah. And then Obi-Wan said it, and I was like, yeah, I picked up on that one, too. <laughs> that was a nice touch. Yeah. That was a very nice touch. And now I'm thinking more of, like, wow, yeah, Leia was always like that, mm-hmm. and just like her mother. Yeah, they set it up uh, nicely. Um, I guess we yeah. should probably talk about Reva. I hate talking about her, because she's become this, the whole, like, vocal minority as a side she's the well, worst character well, ever you know what i'm also kind of happy that they're paying off some some like uh stories that they touched on in in like fallen in like you know fallen order that yeah game. yeah and i'm very happy that they're doing that and with this character mm-hmm. i'm not i don't believe it's the same characters but i believe that's the same group yeah it might of be. like you know j- of like the ones hunting down like the Jedi and the, and the mm-hmm. Padawans that escaped, I believe that's the same thing, like the same group. I don't, I'm not sure if it's the same characters. It's also been forever since I played that game. But, I mean, I believe the main villain in that, uh, she escaped as a Padawan and then went to the Empire, you know, wanting to be trained as a Sith. Are you talking about Reva? Yeah, well, no, that. Oh. Uh, but that's also, like, I think that's a character or a backstory to, like, the main antagonist in the uh, Fallen Order video game. Maybe. I, I'm i not super familiar with the story of that. I kind of know the basics, but... Yeah, I, 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 I it's been a while since I've, I've played and completed mm-hmm. it. So I'm not 100% on there, but I do vaguely. But when they talked about that in the story... Or at least are alluding to in Obi Wan, which I'm pretty sure is what her backstory is. Yeah, no, I think it is because they set up with the younglings and they haven't done anything with the younglings since then, which makes me feel pretty confident that yeah, Reva was a youngling. Yeah, <laughs> that that was spared for some yeah. reason, or maybe like actually put up a fight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I I do think it's an interesting also story. I did like. Yeah. <sighs> Also, I got to say, Hayden fills out that suit very nice. Yeah. And, you know, everybody wants to talk about Hayden Christensen, <laughs> and it's great to bring him back. But I had no idea they also brought James Earl Jones back for this. I was just watching episode three. I was like, yeah. oh, shit, they brought James Earl Jones back. <laughs> yeah. I, at first, I was like, wow, that's a really good impersa. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> just, oh, yeah. Yeah. And. I like that we really see Vader as like a petulant asshole in this show. He's just yeah, terrible. <laughs> like the worst. Yeah, and I it's like you get it. hints of it in the original trilogy, but like it really feels like, if nothing else, it's a good conge- connection between Vader that we see at the end of Revenge of the Sith and Vader we see in A New Hope. Yeah, where like he's still just a piece of shit. <laughs> Um, what did you think of the duel they had at the end of episode three? Uh, that was, I'm surprised they showed as much of that as they did. Yeah. Like, I thought we would have, like, got, had to wait a little bit longer before that showdown. Mm-hmm. But I, I really liked it. I yeah. kind of, like, I, I, I enjoyed it. It was kind of nice to see. You know, Anakin kind of best him a little. Yeah. Well, you you could get that revenge, but he was still definitely being fueled by vengeance and anger. Yeah, no, he wasn't. Obi Wan was still being reserved. Yeah, Obi Wan didn't want to attack him, obviously, because he has a past history and he feels guilty. Anakin and all, and also Obi Wan knows he'd whoop that ass. Yeah, and Anakin (laughs) just wants to torture Obi Wan. That's all he cares about. Yeah. He he is he is literally dragging him through flames. Not to kill him, but to burn him alive. 
because that that's yeah. what happened to him. That it's it's all about revenge for Anakin, and it vengeance, makes yeah, sense. vengeance, mm-hmm. and it and it does, and I think it's it. I really like where they're going with the story, and yeah. I like, I like that. I I, I bet you. I, I hope they explain how Ben is a miraculous healer without having any scars of burning, but I don't think Anakin did that efficient of a job of trying to burn him, though. Yeah, we'll see. As I remember, it didn't look like you really saw his face get burned up too much. I don't know how no. it didn't, but it didn't look like that. It looked like it was mainly his shoulder got burned up, and it's not like yeah. it's not like you see Alcanus's shoulder throughout A New Hope. So, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it's I'm really digging this series. Um, like I said, I hate to bring up Reva, I feel like there are times where the actress could do a better job. And that's kind of all I want to say about it. Because people have been too harsh on her, and I, I do want to see where the character goes, because I think the character is very interesting. Um, and I kind of hate that people are too obnoxious to her, uh, to her, because I'd like to actually be... Like, I don't know, it's just obnoxious, because I feel like I don't want to be too harsh. And I don't even think I would be that harsh, because I don't have that many harsh things to say. But I do think it's an interesting character. I want to see where it goes. And people, just don't be racist. I swear to God. Don't be racist. Yeah. So I I just opened up the uh, YouTube. Yeah. And it still looks like it's buffering from that same point when I was scratching my arm. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at a thing where it looks like my my hand is on my chin. I'm recording this back up. Uh, We'll see how it goes. (laughs) yeah we'll see how this i missed the out. first like six minutes uh hopefully that streamed all right because i can always get the stream to download um maybe something's up with youtube i do not know so if you're watching live we apologize for the constant buffering this will get re-upload don't worry <laughs> of course they won't see that because yes. it's buffering <laughs> Yeah. Uh, anything you want to add to Obi Wan, or do we want to get to uh, uh, Jurassic World two? Yeah, let's get to uh, this genius idea. Yes. <laughs> Listen, all I know is that Jurassic World two is better than Obi Wan because everything is better than Obi Wan. That's what the that's what I've read. <laughs> Those people don't know what they're talking about, Paul. dude. This movie is alive, like me. It's the best. <laughs> These are these are these are people who probably look forward to the annual global flat earthers convention. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, the and just just say that say that again. Oh. <laughs> the Earth is yeah, flat. Just we swear. Say that one. <laughs> you know, I, I I always want to argue when I see those flat Earth maps. Like, how come there's no scale on the map? What do you mean a scale? That tells you how far the distance is between two spaces, yeah. like a scale on every other map like that way i could see how far it is from like you know like kansas city missouri to columbus ohio that's about roughly 10 Mm -hmm. hours sure sure i mean i could see that on a map and i just drove it and like yeah it is roughly about Mm -hmm. that and i could tell that by looking on a map too (laughs) but then again you know no one uses like map map reading anymore that skill is is no Math longer, you know, reading. important. No. Yeah. What is that? Like, what is that? Uh, top- topography or top? Are you talking about Google Maps? maps? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all I yeah. use. <laughs> and they unfortunately blurred out that picture of that guy jerking off on Google Maps, which is very sad. <laughs> no, but you could still see uh, people's messages from the freeway. Yeah. That they litter out in stones. Yeah. That gets fun. Uh, but yes. That gets hilarious. Jurassic World 2. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and open up and say, I, obviously, I dislike this movie quite a bit. I Oh, I hated this yeah, movie. It, I hated this movie. Uh, ha- had you seen it before this week? Yes, okay. I had. I had. This is the one that I had seen. And I was like, well, I keep hearing good things about, like, you know, the first one. And at that point, when I first saw all of the second yeah. one, I had seen the first one up to the point where the boys go off the trail on the ball mm-hmm. and to the end. Yeah. And I mean, even because like, I walked into my friend's house, they were watching. I was like, no, I haven't seen this one. I don't know. I mean, I kind of think this movie was good when it was just called Jurassic Park. 
And they're like, oh, you should at least check yeah. it out. And I watched from this part, and I saw those kids. I'm like, well, they're fucking dumb. <laughs> and then I just sat down and was like, all right, I'll. That got me. I'm like, yeah, their stupidity got yeah. me. I just, I, let's see how they get themselves out of this. <laughs> oh, look, there's a, they're moving in herds. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this one, oh, God, just, just. I enjoy the idea yeah. about it. Yeah, no. I really do. I, I, I enjoy that. I enjoy the upcoming, the everyone how everyone gets uh, what they sow in this. I do enjoy that scene a, a whole oh, lot. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, Yeah, well. This one was just so conveniently fell together. Everything, like, it, it just kind of got a little annoying. Oh, yeah, no, it's, <laughs> this is a, this is a shit show, really. I want to say there are a couple moments. I want to get the good out of the way because there are a couple moments here I forgot about that I genuinely like. Number one, they're going to go back to the island specifically to save Blue. When they brought up the idea of going there specifically to play, save Blue, I was like, okay, I can kind of get on I'm, board with that one. I'm on board for that, too. Yeah, I was I was about yeah. that. Now, when they're first talking about, oh, we don't want these creatures to go extinct, I'm, my first thought is actually, okay, I'm all pro green piece and whatever all that yeah we I'm, I'm all right with we that. genetically engineered these guys in nature saying you know what, we're going to clean up your mess i kind of get it <laughs> that yeah that i kind of support yeah. yeah you know like um a, a, as you know i i'm gonna do what the movie did and quote ian yeah. malcolm you know like dinosaurs had their chance on the yeah. planet and then you know it said that's yeah. it more and they served and they had their time mm -hmm. and they're done like reintroducing them to it is just it, it's dangerous. Yeah, exactly. And Na yeah, and nature <laughs> gonna fix it. That being said, nature wasn't really gonna fix it because in this movie, I want to spe specify the original Jurassic World made a big deal about how it's not canonizing the Lost World and Jurassic Park three. It is only following up the first movie. Mm -hmm. However, in this movie, in a very quick offhand line. He makes reference to Isla Sorna. Yep. Isla Sorna. And Isla Noir. And Isla Noir. Well, Noblar yeah. was from the first movie and Jurassic World. Okay. And then they make a big deal. Oh, uh -huh. there's a volcano on Isla Nublar. It's going to blow up and destroy all the dinosaurs. Okay. So they'll go extinct. Then he brings up Isla Sorna, where we have established there are dinosaurs on that island as well. Yeah. So no volcano on Isla Nublar is going to make the dinosaurs extinct. They've been running wild, Isla Sorna, making the other two movies canon, making the point of, oh, we have to stop the extinction of these creatures, moot at best. Moot. Uh, yeah. It, and it's just an offhand line, just done so casually, and it's like, you didn't even think about how that affects the entire story of this fucking movie. These things are not going extinct. Yeah, because, <laughs> what, three, that one took place on Nublar, right? No, three took place on Sorna as well. Sorna, that's right. Yeah, because they had the pterodactyl. Pit yeah, and there. they made they made the big point of uh, you know, hey, we brought Alan Grant here. He's been on this before, and they made the point of no, he hasn't been on this island. This is a new island. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, say what you will about the other two movies. At least they didn't fucking just fuck up the whole core premise with an offhand line. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they tr they probably thought of it as just like a throwaway line of yeah. dialogue. And <laughs> oh, this will be a fun Easter egg. Your fun Easter egg just introduced that there's two dinosaur islands. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, why don't we um, find a way to get them on one yeah. island? <laughs> but, you know, uh, whatever. So they're going there to save Blue, which is actually a plot line I can get behind because... Okay, Blue's the best character in the entire fucking Jurassic World franchise. I have to specify Jurassic World yeah. franchise. Because not Jurassic Park, but Jurassic World, I get behind Blue. Blue is the best character. Mm. Yeah. Um, which, and there's also another good scene, of course, relating to Blue, where we see him training them. And we see, like, he does submissive, and most baby raptors attack him when he goes submissive. And Blue doesn't. It's like, oh, that's actually really sweet. <laughs> uh, and that's about it for my uh, good thoughts on this movie, because it's all downhill outside of that. 
Yeah, it's it's pretty disastrous after the, that. <laughs> uh, you're really quiet now, by the way. <laughs> oh, it's it's real disastrous after that. Yeah, yeah, it's like okay. So the original Jurassic World had the Vincent D'Onofrio and his terrible plan of putting dinosaurs in the military, which is just like, dude, you have drones. Why would you introduce? an unstable element like fucking dinosaurs to a drone when you already have drones. <laughs> yeah, pretty stupid. But, you know, let's take that dumb idea and almost expand it out to a whole movie with this. Except instead of just being military, it's going to be rich assholes, which... Okay. Maybe. But anyways, they're saving a whole bunch of dinosaurs to auction them to rich people. Yep. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, considering these are, in theory, extinct creatures. Yep. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, considering these are, in theory, extinct creatures, they were going for surprisingly low prices. What, $10 million a pop, it seemed like? <laughs> uh, there was one that went for 100 Like a... A hundred mil. I well, think. was that the? Uh, that might have just been a full total. Was that the endo? No, that was like was the. Uh, no, that was the tank. That was the tank. Uh, herbivore. Oh, okay. The platyosaurus. Oh, oh, the uh, the ankylosaurus. Did that go for yeah, that much? Okay. Yeah. Well, they they do yeah. look cool. I had a couple of toys of those guys. <laughs> they, they, yeah. They, no. No. They 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 did. And they're cool. less likely to they eat did. you. So there's that going for them. <laughs> Cowards. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Oh, wait, we did get uh, introduced to two new characters, too. Oh, yes. Uh, we got introduced to a uh, physician or a veterinary. Oh, yeah. Think, or a, yeah, she was an animal doctor. Yeah. And then the computer uh, guy. Yeah, that that, that 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 charming character. Yeah, he was kind of introduced, and he was helpful getting them to Jurassic World. Although, getting them into the Jurassic World to take system only seemed to require uh, Bryce Dallas Howard's handprint and then it was kind of done. And then it was... Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. Um, and then he hung around for the rest because I guess he's just stuck with them. I get it. Okay. Well, yeah, he. I think he kind of got stuck yeah. and was kind of more just for kind of comic relief yeah. through most of the movie. We'll call it comic relief. <laughs> yeah, more him just overreacting and screaming a yeah. lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh... But, you know, it was a thing. <laughs> it was. Um, uh, there, who's the main bad guy in this? The hunter guy. The guy who oh, pulls yes. teeth. We can't go into this. Buffalo yeah, Bob. Buffalo Bill. Or Buffalo Bill, yeah. Uh, Buffalo Bill, not yeah. A, like, I, he is so identified <laughs> from that Science of the Lambs character. Oh, my God. And the he also was in Joyride. He, he, he played the voice of the trucker in that. Well, I think the only good guy role he's ever played was also in Monk, where he plays, like, the main cop. Which was, yeah. And he talks largely the same way. I mean, Buffalo Bill, I feel like, is kind of an exaggeration on his normal voice, but it's largely his normal voice. And of course, he has it here. It's which just is, his voice. It's such a weird voice that it's great. <laughs> I want to say Ted Levine. He's great. He's great. Uh, yeah, Ted Levine is great. Yeah, when I when I first, I, I was shocked I forgot him in this movie because rewatching, I was like, oh, that's right, Ted Levine is that guy. That's kind of awesome. <laughs> uh. But yeah, he does. He's gonna put when he said that would go great with my necklace. He's gonna put it on and put be in front of the yeah. mirror. <laughs> no, he has this. We all know what happens. He next. has this <laughs> necklace of uh, dinosaur teeth. <laughs> God, <laughs> the delete scene where he does the full tuck. No, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, you know, it, it, it's a very like low lit scene. Mm -hmm. Very quiet. Very nice. Set mood setting. Yeah. And just very. He's got goodbye horses. Very on. quiet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm queuing it up. And very quietly, you softly just hear it come in. <laughs> All right, we a, wanna, yeah, we don't want copyright. We don't yeah, want. It, we is, don't want a copyright. It is a strike. pretty iconic song at this point. <laughs> uh, honestly, it, it it it's a good tune. Yeah, it is. It's awesome. Actually, I don't think I have that on my phone yeah. yet. I need to add it. Okay. <laughs> uh there is uh, there a... was a place i i used to work at mm -hmm. where we could make like our own like playlist for the audio and we would have it just says like save tracks from youtube yeah 
Uh, I had one that I would play whenever I was like the closing manager and I wanted like, you know, campers to leave. Mm -hmm. It was literally that song for 10 hours. Oh, God. <laughs> Just that song on an endless loop. Nice. <laughs> it, 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 uh, at the longest play was about four. Wow. And they were regular. They were dedicated. They were. <laughs> They were regulars. No, they just got to work. They were cool. They were cool hanging out. Like it was more like two and a, like two and a, about three, for a one table mm -hmm. that just wouldn't leave. They knew what was going on. They thought it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Like they go like, man, why are they playing this over? They'd answer, oh, you know, this is our cool off song. We like to come in here, have a few beers, and just relax. And this song just helps us relax. Why? And they would just go back to watching a TV yeah. and drinking beer, <laughs> like just answer it and ignore them <laughs> after that oh it is a classic they were cool song. regulars <laughs> they were they were in on it they were just yeah. cool regulars <laughs> this song is so cool i want to hear it again and again <laughs> non-stop and again. <laughs> i mean i had a buddy who i worked with there he's also a mystery science theater fan uh he was the opening uh, server one morning and i knew that this is back when he and I both drank. I knew that we, we both kind of tied one off the night before, so I knew he was coming in feeling a little rough. I had the Torgo theme from oh, God. Almost the Hands oh, of Fate God. just played on a nonstop loop. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> he, came in, he came out from the bathroom, and I noticed he had his earbuds in. And I was just waiting for him to like take him out and realize, waiting for him to take him out and realize. I tried talking to him, so he took him out, and we chatted a minute. And he put him back in and working. Then I kind of look up and I see him kind of cleaning. And then, wait a minute. <laughs> Dude, do you really have this playing? <laughs> it's a hit song. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, man. This is like, this, this slaps, dude. This, 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 this bangs, this is man. This is how I roll. <laughs> Yeah, if um, if you're listening to this uh, and you and you're not familiar with the Torgo theme from uh, Manos, the Hands of Fate, um, look it up. I, I'm pretty sure you'll find that same eight hour loop of it that I played yeah. that day. <laughs> it's this weird, quir like quirky, uh, like it's it's technically supposed to be a horror movie. It's not scary. It's boring. But it does but... not give it like no. a threatening thing almost no. kind of like a this is a mischievous character yeah that song is just and goofy. really well <laughs> well god that have we talked about manos on no this we channel? haven't gone to manos yet that's i've oh, i've god. have sat down and watched that not mystery science theater version yeah i have too oh it's that's rough. a chore that is your... that, that, that that those opening credits like it it's yeah. needed their commentary is needed oh, for that <laughs> yes <laughs> But, uh, yeah, getting back to Jurassic World, oh. we have to talk about where Ted Levine dies. Because he's going yeah. for the tooth on the Endoraptor. In case you're wondering what an Endoraptor is. In the previous movie, we had the uh, Indominus Rex. It was established that the Indominus Rex yeah. is a mixture of Tyrannosaurus and Raptor, primarily. So now we have the Endoraptor. And, like, I think it's every other... I think it would, they also said, like, every other predator of that period. Yeah, there's lots of stuff, but... Or it was like something. Was it's primarily <laughs> Tyrannosaurus and Raptor. So now we have the Endoraptor. And what's the Endoraptor? The Endoraptor is the Indominus Rex mixed with Raptor. Yeah. <laughs> mixed with Blue. Blue's DNA in so particular. So it's, it's, it's T-Rex and Raptor mixed with Raptor. <laughs> and Blue. Like his raptor his dna because he is so responsive to commands which is exactly what the endoraptor <laughs> is no they developed this stupid yes. like thing that's shaped exactly <laughs> like a fucking gun and they you say you point it it'll have a little red light and you point at somebody and pull the trigger and the rap the endoraptor will attack that target as opposed to maybe just having a gun <laughs> yeah or another gun with just uh, fitted with the laser. Yeah, scope. it's it's the worst weapon of war at all, man. Like you can look at the Star Wars weapons of war and say these are dumb, but this is so much worse. I would much rather have an ATST or whatever <laughs> than this thing. What the old chicken yeah, walker? Yeah, yeah, I'd much that I'd be feel much safer with one of those than I would with this clunky fucking gun oh. thing with a raptor that doesn't do anything. Oh, you have a cat. I have a cat back here. It's likely yeah, getting annoying. I have a cat, too. <laughs> yeah, she was sniffing yeah. in. Hi, Jackie. Ooh. <laughs> she does not like being yeah. held. <laughs> yeah, you get that sometimes. At all. <laughs> 
but she's just like, oh, just, I'm gonna like lean a one yeah. way. <laughs> but uh, anyways, Ted Levine goes get the Endoraptor tooth, and my eldest always points this out. I don't think the Endoraptor pokes open its eyes and looks directly at the camera, but it's really pushing it. <laughs> It really looks like it's breaking <laughs> it the fourth wall in this moment. Because you see it open the eye, no, it, look it, around. It, it, it does break the fourth does it, wall. Does it, it breaks it might the fourth full fledge. wall. I think it uh, does. I think it full fledged. She does. always calls this the Deadpool dinosaur just for that moment. This is a <laughs> dinosaur that just... <laughs> it's, it's, it's infused with so much of Blue's DNA that it can break the fourth wall. <laughs> <laughs> it, can, it can do yeah. shtick. <laughs> it's... It's so dumb. <laughs> next, next, you're gonna see it pull out a hat, and it's gonna have like the little fake Groucho Marx, yeah. you know, mustache Might on. As well. <laughs> oh. oh, yes, this movie. <laughs> this movie might have been better if it did that. Like, just go full in. <laughs> Thank you also for getting that Marx Brothers reference. Uh, I, Marx Brothers are awesome. They <laughs> 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 Uh. <laughs> My favorite Gr- Marx brother has always been Carl. How about you? <laughs> Harpo. Well, you don't like Carl? You know? Harpo. Harpo. No, it's, it's Groucho. <laughs> <laughs> Groucho, yeah. Uh, Groucho, yeah. He was... <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like both Harpo and Groucho had the best chicks. Granted, uh... Yeah. Yeah, Chico was kind of like... Chico had his stick and he stuck around. Was he in all of them? Was it the three of them in all of them? I think it was. I'm pretty sure it and was. I know Gummo. Like I can't. I I know that they were like. I'm pretty sure they were like mostly competing or like. I guess it was perceived that they competed a lot with the Stooges, but when in fact they all were really good friends. Oh no, yeah, I never I never thought about them competing with the Stooges. They're all great though. Well, maybe like studios, yeah. like you know. This is all we have our Marx brothers. They have their yeah. stooges and, you know, like, but in reality, they're probably all like, no, that that last one you guys did was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> well, what? Uh, Gummo left before the movies and then Zeppo stuck around for yeah. a handful of movies, I want to say. I don't know how many. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm not too familiar with their history like I am with the stooges. I might be more familiar with Marx Brothers, but I think I might have watched more Stooges growing up, so I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I, Marx Brothers is something I've kind of been more turning into the past mm-hmm. couple of years. Like, I've always been aware and seen, like, the smaller shticks, mm-hmm. but, like, kind of more deep diving into them the past few years, um, as well as the Stooges, well, too. I know as a kid, I absolutely <laughs> love Duck Soup. Duck Soup is great. No, <laughs> God, I've always loved uh, the uh, Stooges one where they're uh, repairmen, yeah. the plumbers, and like they keep pulling the pipe <laughs> oh, back and forth. Right. That, that one is iconic. Pouring water every fucking where. It's yeah. definitely more iconic than <laughs> Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. Segway, smoothly. yeah. Segway. <laughs> I mean, even st- even even Stooge stick in this would oh, have yes. helped. Like, <laughs> like. If you if the uh, if the um uh, Indominus Rex or what no that was yeah, from the Indo-Raptor. first one no. the two point yeah. yeah G- Gino Dinosaur two point um yeah if that one <laughs> if it would have just like you know maybe retracted its tooth mm-hmm. every time he went to go pull it yeah uh oh yeah so fun fact I was if the Ankylosaurus costs a hundred million dollars then that means you can get. Four, at least 400 ankylosaurus is for the price of twitter fun fact <laughs> <laughs> just uh <laughs> you read that too <laughs> i did i guess uh, i just remember thinking that yeah i just remember <laughs> so an ankylosaurus is less valuable than fucking twitter <laughs> yeah cool all right uh I guess we should talk about the little girl, uh, Maisie. Yeah, that's that's something that I kind of liked the story, but I wish it just wasn't shoehorned in at the literal end of the well, movie. Well, it's a coolish idea, but it's not like they do shit with it really. I, except for I guess the yeah, and I'm kind of more like, Ooh, uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's it's kind of shoehorned in, and I. 
didn't like that about it. Um, so in Jurassic World, we got uh, John Hammond 2.0 with the Indian guy, who I can't remember his name, but he was the rich guy who was in charge of that island now. And then now we get James Cromwell as John Hammond 3.0, well, well, he he's more of like the uh, John Hammond. Yeah, B. yeah. John B. Yeah. Hammond. Um, I love James Cromwell. I want to specify this, but he feels very I, tacked I, on I, in this thankless role. <laughs> yeah, he really does feel like just this. Probably is clearly kind of more of a role that would have been made for yeah. the actor. Uh, who portrayed John, but unfortunately he has since yeah. passed. So it's it's unfortunate. But yeah, it's, no. Uh... And, and and I I realized also while watching this that we were calling uh, B D Wong's character uh, Doctor Wong when it was really Doctor oh. Wu. Well, he's back in this one. He's not... Yes, he is back in this one, and he kind of grows somewhat of a backbone. A little bit, yes, not really, but fuck him yeah. still. Uh, well, they. They Fuck actually him. bring out the during the auction. They bring out the Endoraptor, and they're talking about, and they start deciding to sell it. And it's like, why are you guys even bringing him out? Are you guys insane? <laughs> but yeah, what the fuck did you think was yeah. going to happen with all that l- crooked, corrupt greed down there? You dumb mother. Yeah. At that point, watching it, I was like, man, I hope every T Rex gets out and just fucking eats every last yeah. one of you. But uh, he he gets up and he's like, you can't sell it. It's a prototype. And, of course, the rich guys who are kind of in charge of this say, yeah, fuck it. Let's sell it. We'll make another one. (laughs) We'll make another. I'll buy you another. Oh, you dumb. It doesn't work. Yeah, I'm sure this is going to go perfect. You guys got it nailed. Don't worry. (laughs) Yeah, but Juan was smart. There we go again. Wu Wu was smart. He, uh, he, Wu, Wu. Hmm. The carpet pisser, mm-hmm. woo. <laughs> um, he, he was smart. He actually got all the samples out of there before all the shit started really hitting yeah. the fan. Um, we also did get to watch uh, that guy who was um, the auctioneer. I always forget oh, his name. Is it Toby Jones? Okay. Yes. Yeah, he was in Captain America. I uh, think. Yeah. But he was so, he's so great oh, in yeah. everything. I love him as a bad his, guy. His uh, American accent uh, was questionable but i don't know i'm willing to go with toby jones on anything i don't know early early in his career early in his career i'll Mm. let it slide that's when he started getting more consistent Mm. roles so i would i'll i'll let it slide i'll still argue and i believe he has played capote before yeah i think he did i think his gets overshadowed by the philip seymour hoffman one which was great too but yeah i'm pretty sure he did a similar yeah but his was fucking good like his was I think it was the movie entitled In Cold Blood. Yes, yes. And I think it came out the same time as Capote or around the same time. So it gets overshadowed. Which, which Capote pretty much which Capote pretty much told the yeah. story of In yeah. Cold Blood. And him writing that, yeah. Yeah, it's, I think I've seen that. It's phenomenal good. book if you've mm-hmm. never read it. Yeah, phenomenal book if you if those listening, if you've never read it or or like seen the movie. Like, yeah, Capote or Capote is an amazing movie, but In Cold Blood is a great I have, book too. I have not read the book. But yeah, they're good movies. They're... It's good. It's good. Uh, but anyways, uh, so we get John Hammond's John B. Hammond, as you call him, and I like that. <laughs> yeah, John B. He Hammond. He has a granddaughter <laughs> there. And one thing I thought was interesting, weird going on, was uh, they have a housekeeper, and the housekeeper apparently was trying to get her say bath in the British way, even though she's not British. Uh. Bath. I was yeah. like, okay, uh, she's not British. Why are you doing that? <laughs> Queen's English. Okay, yeah. whoopty shit. <laughs> it's Queen's. You're not a peasant. Yeah. <laughs> Even that, I was like, Fuck yeah, you, lady. But anyways, uh, they kind of <laughs> reveal what she is when they show a picture of the mom as a kid, and apparently it's her. But I remember in the theater, it went by so fast that I didn't even really catch it. Yeah, re- I knew about this part coming up and rewatching it going, oh, God, you guys gave it away that early? Well, in the theater, it went by so fast, I didn't even catch it. But, like, even when they started, like, even hinting about it, I was like, oh, is it just going to be, like, a clone of the mom? And, yeah, it's a clone of the mom. That's his daughter, not his granddaughter. A clone of his daughter. And I get it. 
and uh, like, like I said, I, I, I wish it wasn't shoehorned yes. in or just kind of tacked mm-hmm. on right here at the ending. Like it, but I wish more was like talked about that. And honestly, I kind of think like this is a theory. Like maybe, you know, maybe since obviously, you know, the guys at Engine and everything can clearly do it with a human. I wonder if they ever thought about that cross uh, species idea. Yeah, that seems like the obvious place where this would go. Of course, I don't think that's where the franchise is going. But... No, I don't think it's going to go yeah. that way at all. Like, like, but I that that's my first. That mm-hmm. was my first thought, and still my thoughts on on it even after watching yeah. it after all this time. Like that still seems very, very plausible. Yeah. What happens when we mix it? I still just can't get over the idea that they just wanted to fucking have an auction in some fucking yeah. basement. <laughs> like, I mean, and what for a couple of hundred million dollars? How much did it cost to get all this set up? You can't tell mm-hmm. me that was on the cheap. You can't. You're talking security. Didn't they have like like that lawn? They had valet. Yes. <laughs> that giant mansion, which I'm pretty sure was Wayne Manor in one in the Batman it might movie. Have, oh God, it might have been. It does look like that. I'm trying to think. Like a like a Keaton. Maybe. Like a Keaton yeah. movie. It might have been because I was like looking. I was like, well, hello. Wayne yeah, it Manor. looks like Wayne Manor. If it wasn't, uh, it wasn't Wayne Manor in a movie. It should have been. It should have. <laughs> it should have been. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it's revealed that she's the clone. Uh, the dinosaurs are getting gassed when everything goes to shit because, of course, it goes to shit. What did you think would happen when you did something this fucking stupid? <laughs> uh, and, of course, uh, Claire, who's become a huge animal activist, rights activist between movies for some reason, probably plot convenience, is debating letting them go and decides not to. And that's when we get the iconic line when the little girl presses the button and says, there, I had to do it because they're alive like me. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Yeah, that yes, was bad. Yes, it's very bad. <laughs> and we're seeing dinosaurs now running all over the place. And apparently they're all over the world now, even though, what? Was there like, maybe one or two dozen in that basement like i would think they'd be able to take care of that fairly quickly but i guess now we're just assumed they're all over the world for the new next movie and we're coexisting sure why not sure uh yeah this movie's bad <laughs> yeah this is not a strong entry into this the series pro- like it, it it starts off very promising yeah. but it does pretty much, I want to say this almost copies The Lost well, World. Well, the first half is almost an exact copy of The Last World, and maybe like the second half is like a copy, a semi-copy. A hodgepodge of, of like it. the very hodge... ending of The Lost World. Very. Yeah, like it, it's kind of a hodgepodge of it, but as opposed to it being a downtown San Diego. Mm-hmm. Sorry, just the way Hammond yeah. said that in the beginning just always made yeah. me laugh. San Diego, no. Uh, it's just a mansion in California. Yeah. But I, uh, yeah, and you know the T Rexes. I really, I know, I noticed this about watching these these two Jurassic World movies, and it's something that I'm kind of don't like them over the Jurassic Park series, and it's just because in the Jurassic Park series, I felt that the T Rex was always the main bad guy. No matter yeah. what humans were I there, mean, the T Rex is always like the biggest threat that you have at that yes. island. It's always the biggest threat, regardless of what human threat there is there. The T Rex mm-hmm. is it. They they just they keep trying to overshadow Rex, but even in the first one, Rex was dominant in the yes, end. Yes, he was. He's the king of the fucking mm-hmm. dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. Well, and. This I don't know. I I did see recently. Oh, actually, the, just last night, uh, for, or yeah, actually yesterday, a friend and I we uh, went out to a, like a mid evening show of uh, Top Gun. He hadn't seen it yet, and I was talking to him about it and about our podcast that we t- how we discussed it last week. And just t- I was talking about how as a movie going experience, it was great. 
And while we were like, so we went to go see it in like an IMAX theater and do. Mm, I should have went IMAX my first time. Yeah. <laughs> but they had a trailer for the new Jurassic Park movie. Or Jurassic World movie, and there was a shot where it had like this fence with a giant circular opening that was had a yellow light radiating behind it, and it was raining. And a T Rex just kind of stepped perfectly into that circular mm-hmm. shot where it looked like the logo. And I was like, "Hey, that'd make a great yeah. logo." Sure, sure. I really hope the T Rex is going to be like very predominant in this new one. Yeah, we will have to see. Um, I, I don't know though. I did see some stuff in this new trailer that made me uh, kind of ha- kind of a little more, I guess, I don't want to say like hype for it, but I'm 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 looking forward to watching it. I see a Dilophosaurus. That's the first time we would have seen one in this series. Well, here's something I have to question because you go on IMDb or IMDb, you go on uh, Rotten Tomatoes on the app right here, and let's see how clear I mm-hmm. can get it. But it says 88% for Jurassic World Dominion. I'm like, wow, really? And then what happens is you scroll to the bottom. 88% with no critics reporting in. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? Mm. What is that, Ron Tomatoes? Mm. What is that shit? What is <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I think the trailers for this new one look cool. I think... Um, Maybe it'll be something like this, because I do think you can have fun with Fallen Kingdom here, but not because it's a good movie. It just has so bad it's good moments. Like, bad. Uh, yeah. Like, he, like, like wolf. This is from bad. a story perspective, it's maybe only slightly dumber than The Lost World, but you know what The Last World had that this didn't? Steven fucking Spielberg. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, there are some beautiful shots in The Lost World. Say what you will about the story, because the story is dumb. But, oh, you can tell Steven Spielberg has some, some input as to the look of that movie. Um, yeah. I, I. Oh, you know what? We didn't even talk about the island getting blown up, because I did want to talk about that. Well, that's right. That's right. The island yes. did blow well, up. Well, th- them going to the island was really dumb but was probably the best part of the movie because the second half is just bad <laughs> kind of kind yeah. of boring yeah the first half where you go to the island okay but i love how they knock out chris pratt and they abandon him because yeah they're the villains of course they will but then the island starts flowing down and the lava follows fucking mario rules in this movie like, being near it doesn't burn you, apparently. You just have to avoid the actual lava. Just jump around and avoid the lava. You'll be fine. <laughs> no, no. Lazily lift your arm after you've been hit with a tranquilizer, yeah. and then once you're over a log, you're magically able yes, to recover. Yes. No, Star-Lord. No. Fuck no, you, like, Star-Lord. you see the lava flowing, like, around him. It's like, yeah, he's cooking alive right now. You understand that, right? He's not getting up. He's not... Yeah, I... <laughs> Yeah, he 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 was left for dead yeah. for a reason. <laughs> um, and I love later when he like uh, they go into that sphere thing. Of course, he gets left out and has to run, and you see the volcanic ash cover him. And it's like, okay, we're just gonna ignore that. That's burning hot right now, right? He's fine, right? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, he's fine. Cool, he's fine. <laughs> yeah, he's he he's he's got his magical star. Yeah, Lord that armor that uh, main character armor is really useful right now. <laughs> yeah. That had some thick plot yeah, on it. <laughs> I definitely just wanted to bring that up because I remember just noting the fucking Mario rules in that goddamn lava and being like, oh, god damn it. Of course. <laughs> I think the, I think the movie Super Mario Brothers makes more sense than yeah, that scene. Yeah, it's probably more realistic. <laughs> I think that's more believable, guys. I, think more... I can't tell you how many times me and my friends have all gathered on an old mattress and gone sledding down a frozen yeah, Sure, pipe. sure. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. That still sounds like fun, even though, like, I'm thinking in my head, you're gonna break your yeah, legs. You're, you're just gonna shatter. <laughs> but, but it'll be fun. Uh, anything you want to add before we go ahead and uh, head into the boys? Oh no, let's let's get into this diabolical Ooh, it's mess. Diabolical. <laughs>
I want to go ahead and add some audio credits at the end here. Uh, the theme music you're hearing at the beginning and end of this podcast was uh, written and performed by George Johnson, a very good friend of mine. And my current Patreons are uh, Fel Martins, David Lara, and Lindsay Painkhurst. If you'd like to become a patron, go ahead and follow the link down below. Anything you can provide would be incredibly helpful to this channel. We're barely limping by right now. Uh, I'd love to make this my full-time job, but I'm miles away from that right now. So any help you could provide, just a dollar a month would be amazing. You know you want to. All your friends are doing it.